Hi, welcome to LT Physics. Uh, we're going to do an example involving an inclined plane, multiple objects, without and then with friction. So, we'll start with an inclined plane. Oh, and this problem we're going to do with zero numbers. So, we have an inclined plane, and we're going to put two blocks on it. We'll call this one M1. There's a frictionless, massless pulley, which we'll change in a little bit, but for now we'll make it a frictionless and, frictionless and massless. And then we have a hanging block M2. The angle of the incline is theta. So um, whether there's friction or not, you have to guess which way the system is going to go. Uh, so I'll make a guess. I will assume that it's going to go clockwise. So that's going to be our positive direction. Locally, for this guy, up the incline is going to be positive. And locally, for this guy, down will be positive. Now, um, if, we're, if we're given numbers, and you find out that you're, you're wrong, um, all that would happen would be you would get a negative acceleration. And just the number, the magnitude of the acceleration is right, you just guess the wrong direction. So um, assuming the system goes clockwise, how do we determine uh, the acceleration of the system uh, and or uh, the tension in the string? So uh, we're going to start by drawing an FBD of each object. We'll start with the block that's on the incline. And for now, we're going to say there's no friction. So here's. Block one, we'll just give it a little dot for, for its mass. And the forces that act on it are the normal force, the incline holding it up, the tension in the string, and the force of gravity, which is M1g. Notice I put M1 there, not just Mg, because there's two masses in the, in the, in the uh, situation. You don't want to confuse them later on. Um, we're then going to split all of our forces into components that are parallel to and perpendicular to the, the motion, which in this case is parallel to the incline. So for locally, for this guy, we're going to have parallel to the incline and perpendicular to the incline. So if we look at our FBD, two of the three forces already fit that bill. Tension is parallel to the incline, normal force is perpendicular. But Gravity is neither parallel nor perpendicular, so we're going to split that up into components. From previous uh, lessons, we know that the component of gravity that's perpendicular to the incline is mg cosine theta. The one that's parallel to the incline is mg sine theta. So I'm going to redraw this FBD. It's still 1, but now every force has been split into components that are either perpendicular to or parallel to the incline. And notice I drew tension bigger than this because I'm guessing that the, the, the object's going to go that way. It's going to accelerate that way. Also notice these two arrows are about the same size because the object is not accelerating perpendicular to the incline. Uh, these two forces, therefore, will be equal. Uh, for block two, it's a little easier. Down's positive. I'll draw that FBD here. There's only two forces acting on it. There's M2G, and there's tension. Oh, and since I'm guessing that the block is going to accelerate down, I'll draw that tension force a little bit smaller than M2G. Uh, for the first block, that way is positive locally. For this block, that way is positive locally. Uh, for each block, I am going to then write Newton's second law out. So for the first block, we've got net force on block 1 equals m1a. The net force on block 1 is t minus mg sine theta. So I write t minus mg, m1g sine theta equals m1a. So that's my equation of motion for the first block. For the second block, it's a little easier. Um, I'm not going to rewrite this, but if there's a 2 there, and there's a 2 there. Uh, but here it's just m2g minus t equals m2a. So we got m2g minus t equals m2a. So without numbers, uh, one easy thing to do here is just to add your equations together. On the left side, the tension is going to drop out. You have a t here and a minus t there. Uh, these will be m2g minus m1g sine theta. On the right-hand side, you've got m1a plus m2a. Okay, 
And then if you do a little bit of math, so for instance, on the left side, we factor out the g. On the right side, we factor out the a. If you factor out the a on the right side, you end up with a times m1 plus m2. Yeah, so divide both sides by m1 plus m2, and you get the following expression. You get g times m2 minus m1 sine theta over m1 plus m2. And that's your expression for acceleration. A couple things to note. If you were to do the math, if I were to give you numbers for m1, m2, and theta, if this term were negative, all that would mean is we guessed wrong, and the acceleration is actually counterclockwise. Um, the overall, in a way, the overall resistance to motion in this uh, situation is just m1 plus m2. It's one way to look at that. Okay? So that's an, that's an example without numbers. What if we were going to add friction? Okay, how would that change your problem? Well, again, you still have to guess which way the object's going to go. So let's assume it's going to go clockwise. This guy's going to go up the hill. That guy's going to go down. Um, this FBD would now change. It would be an additional force on this, on this uh, object, and that would be friction, FF. Okay? And I'll put that here as well. Now, that guy is already parallel to the incline, so I don't have to worry about breaking that up into components or anything. Um, how do we calculate friction? Well, FF equals mu FN. And since uh, it's moving, it's sliding along the incline as kinetic friction, so I'll put a little K there. Um, so the force of friction equals mu sub K. Well, what's FN? Well, FN in this case is going to equal mg cosine theta because we know the block is not accelerating uh, perpendicular to the incline. So I'll replace Fn with mg cosine theta. This term uh, would then go up here. You would subtract mg, or mu, sorry, mu, mu sub k mg cosine theta. Uh, when you did your math in this term here, there would be a minus mu mg cosine theta. Uh, and then in here, uh, that would show up as in, this, in the parentheses here, it'd be a minus mu sub k uh, m, and this is m1, should have put that before, that's m1 uh, cosine theta. So that's how your, your equation would be modified. Notice that we're having another minus thing in here, another negative thing, meaning our acceleration is less than it was before. Again, assuming that this thing is accelerating clockwise. So that's an example of uh, motion of two objects, uh, one of them on an incline, without and then with friction. Thank you very much.